Um, first five at 355 today were Daniel Reinkoff, Michelle yeah. Presswood, yeah. Liz Sutton. Yes. That was me, Basha. <laughs> that was Basha. <laughs> For some reason, I have your link on my calendar. Okay, got yeah, yeah, gotcha. Okay, so Basha. Um, Beth Denny and Carol Nall. Yay, everybody. Uh, Basha and Liz, you might, uh, both uh, both of our hosts gave a gift today for first five, so you can find <laughs> number at one, can't, you can split it. Oh, Basha deserves sure. it. She's uh, awesome. <laughs> if she wins, I win indirectly. <laughs> there you go, because she's a happy girl, right? Hey, Basha, you can change your name on the- um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to look at that. Thanks. Whitney will tell you how. Yeah. Um, all right, everybody. Uh, hello, happy Wednesday. We're so glad all of you cowboys and cowgirls are here. I don't see any real outrageous outlaws yet, but uh, Miss Kelly McAllister is being replaced today by Inga Campbell, her counterpart. Howdy. <laughs> and our host today uh, are Jim Tolbert from the Stein Lodge. Say hello, Jim. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And Michaela Holbrook from Sundance. Say hi, Michaela. Hi. So those are your judges today. And uh, they're going to be evaluating your presentation or your story. And this is storytelling time. So anyone who wants to speak to the judges, uh, there's a lots at stake today. Each, uh, both Jim and Michaela are offering up a package. Inga's got her Maui gems lined up. So there's lots to give away today. So anybody want to? I'll go. Ah, uh, Carol, first to go. Go ahead. I will go because I only have three words to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my outfit, I have his shirt on. Oh, you do? <laughs> he, uh, he took his jacket off. I put it on. <laughs> so, thank you, Bob. <laughs> Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll stay right here so everybody can see. I, I was trying to move over far enough so everybody can see and we pretend like we're sitting together in a dark movie theater. That's what there we are. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Carol. Who else? All right. Hi there. Hi, it's Lori. Oh my gosh, you've got a red, you've got yeah. red hair. You are Bonnie. I Wait, am, I am Bonnie of Bonnie and Clyde. I have my gun. I got the color, I got the tan. <laughs> so this is my, my best outlaw version of Bonnie. Where'd you get the gun? Uh, in the next door neighbor's kids. Oh, really? <laughs> You're scouring the neighborhood for this is really good, guys. I did learn very sadly that Bonnie and Clyde actually killed 13 people in 1934. So they were not wow. to be met. They're not to be hero worshipped or anything. We didn't say they had to be good people. We just right, said, exactly. Your outlaw. But they were beautiful, <laughs> more beautiful than Faye Dunaway in that role. There you go. <laughs> uh, send us a selfie, Laurie. I know you will. Okay. Carol, send us a selfie. I see Whitney taking some screenshots already. But Beth, what's going on behind you? Okay. Okay. I'll go. So uh, my inner outlaw is Thelma and Louise. So I'm representing Louise today. Um, yes, it's a movie, and, but it's still one of the most strong and fearless female power movies I think that's out there. And of course, it's the movie that introduces all to Brad Pitt. Um, so behind me today. There you go, look. And my, Thel well, my Thelma in blue shirt over here who cannot be with me today because she's on lockdown in DC. Um, and we are actually standing at Thelma and Louise Point, which is actually in uh, Utah not by the Grand Canyon, as most people think. It's in Utah, um, which is one of my favorite states, and it's right outside of Canyonlands National Park. It's on a very long and bumpy four by four road, and it's not quite easy to get to, but we had it on our list of things to do, and that's actually where they drive their car right over the cliff, right there into the Colorado River. So um, that brings me to Louise and my representation today with my Maui gems on as nice well. Nice choice, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, Beth. Um, so as you said, Carol, uh, yes, I am well known for adventure travel and solo travel and <laughs> fearless random trips to strange places. <laughs> <laughs> and who is your Thelma back there? Your Louise? The, the... It's, actually, it's, my, it's my cousin. Her name's Shelby. And she does live in D.C. Okay. 
And she's a frequent traveler with me on my trips. Wow. Well, you daredevils have my complete and undying admiration. <laughs> a great presentation. Hey, Scott. Hey. Hi to everybody. Howdy. How are you? Which outlaw are you today? Do doing great. Good. Did you choose an outlaw? No. No, I'm just. I'm just... No, you're just here to learn about Stein Erickson and Sundance. Well, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> that is the point. Eventually, we'll get to it. <laughs> Who else wants to say hi? I know there's some competitive uh, souls out there. Who wants? I'll, to I'll go. That girl. So I'm not an outlaw. I'm a pseudo outlaw. I am. Um, channeling my Charlie Seringo, who was a bounty hunter for Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and the Wild Bunch. And he went undercover and infiltrated the Wild Bunch gang, which is um, Butch Cassidy's gang. And their wanted poster is a funny story. They were letting off steam in Texas for a while and they went into a portrait studio and had their portrait done and the studio <laughs> hung it in the window and someone from Wells Fargo walked by and recognized them <laughs> as someone who robbed their bank, I assume. And it went straight onto the wanted poster. That's why the Wild Bunch has such a nice wanted poster. <laughs> And then I've got the other Butch, the actual Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid um, wanted poster behind me. But um, Charlie Seringo was a pretty well-known lawman who uh, for years tried to chase down Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and managed to get into the Wild Bunch gang um, and get inside for a little while. You really did your homework. Now, did, did you know this stuff already or... Um, I mean, I lived in Wyoming for a long time, so I'm, I'm used to kind of digging into these stories of the Wild West because it kind of fascinates me how they moved around so much in yeah. those times. Like they really got around for a time when they're on horseback or in wagons. Right. Well, you get, the, you get the person who does the deepest dive award, I think. <laughs> And mustaches are really hard to stay on. So it might not be on by the end, by the way. <laughs> and don't forget to take your selfie with your background, your presentation. Of course. And I made the background. You made the background? Yeah. I, I mean, I pieced it together so I could have the wild bunch and uh, the one, the two wanted posters together behind I me. I how much thought you guys are putting into these. I hope our hosts are as impressed as we are. <laughs> Absolutely. Good, Jim. Yeah. Anybody else want to say hi? I'll say hi. Who is it? Daniel? Yeah. I'm trying to channel, uh, I don't know if anyone saw the movie Tombstone, but uh, I love that movie. One of my favorite uh, more recent Westerns. And they had this ca character, uh, Doc Holliday, which was played by Val Kilmer. He was Val Kilmer. I still remember him as like the, uh, the Brad Pitt of the 80s. But um, yeah, his character was this uh, gambling saloon guy, and uh, his last name is Holiday. So I thought that was like so appropriate for a hospitality Zoom call. So that's who I'm trying to be right now. That's uh, the emulation. That that you're hanging out. Bring it. Yeah. Do you know whose bar that is you're hanging out in? Um, I actually don't, <laughs> but, I, but I had it, and it was uh, I'm like this is the perfect Zoom background. Yeah, it totally, totally. You nailed it, Daniel. No. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Anybody else want to say hi? I'll say hello. Who is it? Uh, it's Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Uh, first of all, this is my first um, uh, Zoom Retreats Resources call this year. So happy new year to everyone. Happy new year. Uh, I'm, I'm channeling my, my inner outlaw of a biker. So, uh, you know, got, got the goggles, got my chain wallet, got the biker boots. Ooh, the man. But not all bikers are outlaws. I just thought throw a little twist I'll in look, it. Look, and you're the only person really that we have who's willing to stand up and show their lower half. So <laughs> extra credit. And I am wearing uh, pants. I kind of thought you might be that dude that jumped out of the airplane with all that money. So <laughs> kind of look oh. like you could be him too. So that would be a good one. Yeah, DB. A DB something. Yes. He's probably still wandering around the desert trying to figure out what it's. DB Cooper. 
D.B. Cooper. Yeah. yeah. But thanks, everyone. Thanks for letting me join. Hey, Robert Redford found Sundance riding his motorcycle through the mountains. So fits right in. Love it. Thank you. Indeed. Indeed. Who else wants to say hi? This is Kara. I'll go. Hi, guys. Hi. I'm channeling um, my inner badass lady and also trying to fit into a, um, a costume from high school. <laughs> so I'm not going to show you the bottom half. I'll just see if it like the top half. <laughs> I'm Annie Oakley, and she's like one of the greatest sharpshooters there ever was, and um, just a badass in general. So I've got my rifle behind me, and I'm ready for my trip out west. <laughs> You've got some kind of pilgrim collar going on there. It's like, it's like a little, it's, a, I don't know. It's she, you know, you had to be prim and proper while being a badass. Like I still look a lady. I don't know. I've got a belt, you know. <laughs> it's Lots of fun. You get your gun. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you get much for some high school musical. I'm not sure. <laughs> Okay. Taking reusing to the next level. <laughs> Repurposing. Yes. Got it. Anybody else want to say hi? Do we have any new people to the call today? I think we do. Everybody that's new, please say hello so we can meet you. Hey, this is Janet Abazia. Um, I did Sundance for almost 10 years. I was going to say, oh, I'm coming as Lisa Barlow because, you know, she's on Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And Lisa used to do help us find our venues for our different events. But she would have been very glamorous. And I am not. So <laughs> I didn't glam up for the call. So I'm not worthy of being Lisa at this point. <laughs> yeah, but you're one with real life Sundance experience. And I'll bet you've got some stories to tell. Say. Yeah, she just muted so that nobody could hear her stories. Uh -oh. No, I said, I do have some very funny stories. Yeah. To tell. <laughs> we can save those till after everyone has a cocktail. Who else is new that would like to say hi? We, we're really glad that you're here. I do see some names that we don't recognize. Hi. Hi. How are I'm you? Crystal. Hello, Crystal. How are and you? welcome to my dressing room. <laughs> You have some jewelry going on back there, I see. You have options. I do. I've got some jewelry going on. <laughs> but it's great to, to uh, join you guys on this. I love it. I lived in Utah for 20 years. Um, and I'm now in Atlanta. I've been in oh. Atlanta now for 20 years. But I know the area well. Love Park City. Spent time at, up at Sundance, uh, to the theater, to the restaurants. Never did, a, did a, um, an event at Sundance, though, so I'd like to find out more. And a couple of years ago, I did do a meeting in um, Park City. My so family's going on vacation to Park City. I took a group from Atlanta and went out to Park City, and they loved it. Loved yeah, it. so beautiful. It's fabulous. Our family's going on vacation to Park City this summer, so I may call you and pick your brain. Oh, God. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing place. I'm, I'm flying blind on this planning. <laughs> no Can't idea. go wrong with Park City. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad you're here. Thanks nice to meet everybody. Hi. We, some people just want to stay way in the background, but we like to show you. Say hello. Anybody hello. else? Deb Dijak just had to pop off for just a moment. She has us on mute. Um, she had to take a call, but she's listening. She'll be back on shortly. Does she want to say hi? Uh, she, she she's wait. actually on a call right now. She had to take a call. She could just silently yeah. come back. Yeah. Correct. Great. Okay, well, if nobody else wants to speak, going, going, gone. There's a couple. Carol, I'll say hi. Uh-huh. Hello. <laughs> Look hi. at that. <laughs> hey. Hey, good to see everybody. Nice to meet you. Happy the year, and I love seeing uh, Bob behind you there. <laughs> he's, my, he's my secret date. <laughs> I've got a couple puppies keeping me company. I've been working from home since March. Indeed. Well, they're good company oh. sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> So it's good to see everybody. Where, where do you live? Where are you from? I'm actually in Fort Mill, South Carolina, just outside of Charlotte. Okay. So yeah, Collins Aerospace, you guys say prayer aerospace companies aren't doing so well these days. So kind of like the hotel business. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But we had our earnings release yesterday and uh, it's gonna get better. So Woo 
We believe in that. We believe that. So cheers, everybody. If you brought a cocktail, let's drink to Thanksgiving better. Thanks for coming. So and cheers. <laughs> we hope you'll come back. We, we are trying to have some fun here and keep everybody afloat. I can tell. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Whitney, do you want to go ahead and set up the parameters for the call? Well, sure. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, if you haven't been with us before, I uh, just wanted you to know I'm Whitney Bradley, uh, my partner Carol Owen and Marina O'Leary are both on the call. And we do these each week, Wednesdays, four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So we'll, we'd love to have you back for any and all of these. Um, they're, they're usually just a ton of fun and very informative. So please join us again. Uh, just during the call, if you have any questions for the presenters, type them in the chat box and I'll moderate those at the end of the call. And if you're not speaking, uh, please keep yourselves muted because we are recording all of these and it just makes it a, a much cleaner recording. That's about it for now. I'm gonna hand it over to my partner, Carol, who's gonna tell us a little bit about our presenters and the resort. Well, I think we've kind of covered uh, setting the scene for these two wonderful resorts up in Park City. Um, I have a, a little longer history with both, well, with Sundance as well as Stein. Um, like many of you who've been to Sundance, it's just such a magical place and brings so many different opportunities for um, being creative and uh, bonding with people over things like crafts and concerts and film. Um, he's really created, Mr. Redford has really created a haven for the arts and a place where you can kind of let go of uh, whatever your current environment is and just really be in nature uh, to bring your most creative self to the experience of being there. So we're super excited to have Michaela Holbrook with us from Sundance Resort. And then my personal history also includes a stay at Stein, uh, the first and only time I went to the Sundance Film Festival. And I, I, it's one of my bragging rights moments because uh, the Stein was really where many of the celebrities were staying. And we were uh, encountering Kevin Bacon, Kira Sedgwick, and Helen Mirren, who were making, working on a project together. And they were at the Stein, sitting at the next table from breakfast. I was sitting on the couch in front of the fire and they made me move because they needed to do some photo ops, but they were everywhere for a couple of days and super charming, very personable. And it made me realize just what a fabulous um, beacon of hospitality the Stein Lodge, the Stein Erickson Lodge in uh, Park City is. So without further ado, I don't know who wants to go first, Michaela or Jim, Tolber Jim Tolbert. So. Uh, uh, we didn't establish that. Who wants to go first? I'll go Maybe. first. Yeah. Okay, Michaela, ladies first. Please say hello to Michaela Holbrook from Sundance Resort. Hey, everybody. So I'm going to start us off with a little video of Robert Redford kind of telling the history of Sundance. So you doing it just for us? Yeah, just for this. <laughs> okay. I'll get the popcorn. <laughs> Let's see. I don't 50 years ago. And I'd taken a side Start road and come again. There we go. Can everyone hear it? Well, I guess it all started with a simple ride over 50 years ago. And I'd taken a side road and come up through this canyon, which is called Provo Canyon, where everything is kind of very tight, narrow, and confined. And, and then suddenly the landscape just opened up. And I saw this majestic view of it giant mountain. I guess I knew this was where I wanted to put a stake in the ground. And it was idyllic because it was so raw and, and kind of primitive, which made me fall in love with the whole canyon. A few years later, when I could afford it, I bought two acres of land for $500 and built a cabin for my family. But change is inevitable, so it was just a matter of time before this whole beautiful area was going to be discovered. I realized it would be developed away from what I loved. At that point, I pledged to do everything in my power to preserve it. And I guess that was the birth of Sundance Mountain Resort. So we built a tree room restaurant early on, centered around a 65-foot pine tree. And I wanted the interior to resemble something modern with sort of an artistic look. And I had been inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright's Talisian West and its north parapet wall. It kind of had the appearance of an artist's palette, and I was really taken with it. So I decided to employ that here at Sundance. And then Sundance became a place where I could meld my two loves of nature and art. 
And I realized if I could do that with some sustainability, then it could become a legacy for people that love the area. So the amphitheater became a place where that vision came to life. And its unique stage and song performances have been a staple here now for decades. Other resorts have had more money than I did to build bigger things, but there was a human quality that was missing. The love of the land, a feeling of the land. If you put a root deep enough in the ground, the blossoms will inspire others to come. So what's at the core of Sundance? What's the flame that started any of this? It's about storytelling. I came from a storytelling family, and my life has been about storytelling from the beginning. And the history of Sundance is a story to be told. When I was young, I would read books at the library, and they were always about a world that was bigger than the one I was growing up in. And I loved being able to feel like I had a window to a larger world. There are very few phrases more thrilling to me than once upon a time. And I can't imagine any child that doesn't feel the same way. My hope is that everyone who experiences Sundance will feel like they have a glimpse into that larger world and that they'll come away with their own story to tell. Yeah, so Robert Redford, he's our man. Let's see. Jumping into this. Sorry. Let's see. Okay, sorry, not very tech savvy over here, apparently. <laughs> Let's get started. So Robert Redford is our founder. So he found Sundance going through um, the canyon and just decided to preserve it. So we have over 6,000 acres of preserved land that he has preserved, which is amazing. Um, get started. Some photos of the resort. We have Mount Tupanogos that looks over the resort, which is the most incredible view ever. Just thought these were some fun old pictures. So Robert Redford started the film festival back in 1985 and he actually started the Sundance Institute in 1981. And they are the ones that put on the film festival and he just wanted Sundance to really be a haven for creativity and just really getting those filmmakers together. It started out um, in 1985 with 13 staff members, and now they're up to 311 staff members with almost 1,000 attendants yearly, which is kind of insane. <laughs> it's grown and it's the largest film festival in the United States. Here's some just photos I pulled from the archives of our good buddy, Bob. This one's fun, him pulling his son. So we have tons to do at the resort. The general store is just right over from where I am. That is kind of where the catalog started. So they started the catalog in the 1980s, which if you've seen it around, that is where that kind of started. Cute little spot for jewelry and arts and clothing. We have 95 guest rooms on property and about 12 mountain homes. Those vary just some of our lodging pictures. So we have anywhere from a standard room up to a mountain loft. There's five different room types. Um, our mountain lofts have like a living room, um, bedroom, and then separate loft area. And then standards are just like your basic hotel room. And then mountain home photos. Then we have over 4,000 square feet of conference space. Um, one thing that I love about Sundance is we have indoor and outdoor with every single one of our spaces. So they really try to bring that outside in. Um, this one on the left is the rehearsal hall. It was built as a rehearsal space for the Sundance Institute to do their film labs and things we still do every summer, um, but it's just a gorgeous space right there on the water. You can see the trout in the ponds there. 
Yes, you can. This pond over here, it's right there on the left. It's amazing. They grow huge because they don't ever leave. So sometimes you get the little kid that feed them bread and <laughs> let's see. So we have tons of activities, summertime, hiking, mountain biking, horseback riding, lift rides. The Provo River is a blue ribbon river, um, one of the best you can fly fish. Also, summertime is my favorite because we have the plays every year as well as the Bluebird concert series, which are singers and songwriters that we bring over from the Bluebird Cafe in Nashville. So that's what you'll see right here down on the right. Um, and they come and play the, those songs and tell the stories behind the songwriting and everything. They're the most probably like the more popular country songs that you'll hear on the radio. Um, we just got this zipline a few years ago and it's incredible. The views are insane and it's one of the highest off the ground in the US. Um, we have skiing, cross country, snowboarding, snowshoeing. Then they do some night skiing, night owling, things like that. Then year round we have the spa, the art studio. Art studio is my favorite. So they have a silversmithing class, which I love. And I started my own silversmithing business because I loved that class so much. So Everything I'm wearing today is all stuff that I made at home just from learning from the art studio, which is awesome. So all of this soap is made in-house and you'll find it in all of our lodging rooms as well as they recycle all of our glass on property. So the glass that you'll see me drinking out of is a recycled glass cup that they made on property as well. Plenty to do. We have multiple different restaurants. We have the Foundry Grill, Tree Room, Owl Bar, Deli, Bear Claw up at the top of the mountain. This is Bear Claw. The views are incredible. We can do private events up there. And then Deli, food truck. This is the Foundry Grill. It's our full service restaurant, breakfast, lunch, dinner. And then this is the famous Owl Bar, which was purchased the Rosewood Bar in the back was purchased by Robert Redford, and it is from the 1800s. It's the Rosewood Bar that the real Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid used to frequent in Wyoming. So it had orange shag carpet on it and bullet holes when they bought it, brought it over, and it's a fun little outlaw story. And then this is the tree room. So it was built around the tree, that same room that I'm in right now. So yeah, that is everything. And Sundance really focuses on food as art and just nature and bringing people together. So our wine program is a big deal for us too. And that's it. Okay. Thanks, Nikki. Yeah. Anybody got, well, I have a question. What is your largest private home that you have in your rental program? We have a seven bedroom home. You do? That can, sleep, can sleep like 16 comfortably without using couches and you know <laughs> all that fun stuff so have you got anything uh just small a little smaller than that is that does it just jump from like three bedrooms to seven bedrooms so we have a two bedroom to a seven bedroom but we have a six bedroom a five bedroom four bedroom so we pretty much have everything in between let's talk about that before i sign any agreement oh yeah <laughs> come on over <laughs> anybody else have any questions of michaela all I right. do, Jimmy. Um, talk to us about your meeting space if we were to have a group event. Yes, so meeting space wise, we have anywhere from a meeting space that can hold 30 up to 250. So we have two larger spaces that work great for bigger groups and then a couple of smaller ones. They all have gorgeous views of the mountains. Um, our largest one is about 4,000 square feet. So, okay, and Michaela, there. There are a few questions in the, the chat. Here. Okay. Hold on um, is there golf near Sundance? We don't have golf on property, but just up in like Midway, Heber area. So about 20 minutes from us is going to be the closest golf area. 20 minutes. Okay. And then one more time, how many hotel type rooms do you have? We have 95 of the individual type of rooms. So anywhere from those standards up to a mountain loft. Okay. And the closest airport? Is Salt Lake City International, it is an hour away, so 55 miles. Okay. Uh, and what about Provo? Because Provo, can you can do general aviation. Yes. So Provo is about 30 minutes from us for those smaller flights as well. And we also have a private airport up in Heber as well. So if people were to 
fly in privately. That one's about 20 minutes from us. Do any national airlines fly into Provo? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And, and what about activities? To, and tell us about some of the activities that you have around. I know, you, I know you showed us some pictures, but and you have the zip line there and you have snowshoeing. Why don't you sit, just break them down into summer and winter? Yes, so summertime we have mountain biking, hiking, you can ride the lift, fly fishing, you can go down and do river rafting on the river. We have a spa and you can do our classes in the art studio year round as well. So they have pottery, painting, photography, silversmithing, candle making, all sorts of stuff. So there's plenty to do definitely. And then hiking, mountain biking, zip line, all of that stuff in the summer as well. And yes, like that, that bear claw at the top of the mountain looks like it was has been there for 300 years. What what's the story with that building? So bear claw was built when they built the first lifts. So it is from I want to say it's from the 80s, um, but with our new ownership, they are planning on expanding that and making it bigger. So. We'll see what happens in the next five years with that space, which I'm excited about. So speaking on that topic, so they just sold the resort a couple weeks ago and they will be adding some extra ski terrain and another lift and some high speed lifts within the next couple of years. So watch for that. That's going to be some exciting news if you're a big skier. Yeah. Okay. And one more question, uh, peak versus value season. So peak season is going to be surprisingly summer for groups. And then off season for us is April, November. So pricing rate wise, off season, they use, our rates usually start at like 189 and can go up to, you know, 350. And um, peak season, they're going to be more expensive. They probably start around 250 and go up to maybe 600 for our largest room types. And are there buyout opportunities? We won't do a full resort buyout, but we'll do lodging buyouts. So no buyouts of like all of the restaurants, but definitely of all of the lodging. Okay. All right. Well, that's this room block during the film festival. Once it goes live again, is that out of the question? Do you just block it off for artists and all of that? It or? depends on how big. We'll usually do room blocks of like 15 if it's towards the end of the festival, but we don't do any room blocks the first weekend of the festival. That's okay. We get, we have Jim now. I bet yeah, you have Jim for that. <laughs> for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I want to just kind of support something we touched on, and that is if you're looking for unique uh, team building activities and bonding activities, those classes in the uh, various crafts, arts and crafts classes, as well as the opportunity to play with you know improv theater, music in that performing arts space, really spectacular opportunity for people to bring their groups together uh, without having to create something artificial. So we really love Sundance. That's wonderful. I love it. Yeah. All right, Mr. Jim, the Stein Erickson Lodge and this group of Stein Lodges and hotels, uh, condos and various other options. I believe it's quite an empire there in Park City. Please tell us about it. Sure. Thanks for, thanks for, and I, I have a little video that I'm going to show shortly. And Carol, you'll have to tell me which one of the top 10 you were, because I know you were in that, in this little story here that I'm going to tell you, but um, hang on. I'm going to share my screen here and my sound. There we go. Can everybody hear me? We can. Okay. So Stein Erickson, um, a lot of people don't realize was a real person. He, he, uh, he was a skier. He was an Olympic champion skier in the 1952 Olympics. Um, gold in the slalom, silver in the giant slalom. And he was a celebrity, a skier celebrity before skiers were celebrities. So he came um, to Utah through kind of um, a partnership and um, Edgar Stern had decided to develop the Deer Valley Ski Resort, which is the mountain we sit on. And uh, he wanted a name and a face of skiing to represent um, the skiing portion and draw skiers to what at that time was Park City was relatively unknown in the late 70s, early 80s. So that's exactly what he did. So he gave Stein a parcel of land, said, you do with this what you want, 
um, but we, this is your, our partnership in developing this new ski area and literally putting Park City on the map. So that's kind of how it came to be. So the original lodge is up here in front. So that opened in 1982. We're 178 guest rooms and suites. But over time, um, we have developed the, the, the brand into the Stein Collection. We've added the Chateau Deer Valley, which is literally just across the drive. We've added the Stein Residences, which are latest and greatest, very cool modern mountain kind of um, opportunity. And then we've recently, we've added a real estate division and luxury homes. So now we're managing some 10 bedroom, 15 bedroom luxury homes on the Deer Valley and the Deer Crest area, which is literally the ridge right above us here. So that's kind of what's happened. Um, Carol, when, um, when we were connected, I love the theme, um, you know, and, and um, who was it? I think it was Kara who um, did the history. So I'm not gonna do that. So here's, here's um, Butch Cassidy and Sundance and here's Butch Cassidy and Sundance side by side. You can kind of see the similarities there. And I, I loved it because uh, Stein Erickson himself. So this is pictures of Stein. He was kind of an outlaw in his own right when it comes to the skiing world. They call him the father of freestyle. He was doing front and back flips, twists and things on skis in the 50s when it was unheard of. And if you're a skier, think about this. These, these skis are almost seven feet long. They're held on with leather straps and boots that only come to your ankle. So if you think about what he was doing during the 50s and that equipment, it's pretty pretty crazy. So this is this is what he would look like if he was Robin, if he was running with the Butch Cassidy and Sundance gang. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, and I didn't do this. I had to hire that out to get the bandana on. But um, <clears throat> so to transition into Sundance, um, so the property opened in 1982. The festival itself started in 85. So the Stein Erickson has a lodge um, and Stein Erickson himself have been part of it since the beginning. So uh, you're right, we've had some pretty amazing people up through last year. This year, it's a whole different story. So we're just gonna kind of pretend it didn't happen and move on to 2022 and get this going. But I asked our um, VP of operations who's been here for 22 years and that's kind of indicative of, of the length of service here in our property. But uh, to put together a little list of funny stories that have happened over the years in Stein. So this is, this is Dan Bullard. And these are some of his top 10 experiences, about four minutes. So hang oh, on. This is great. I've been asked to share a few Sundance Film Festival stories. After over 20 years of hosting many aspects of the festival, there is rarely anything these days which shocks me. There are hundreds of Sundance stories, many not safe for work, and similar to Dave Letterman, I have put together a top 10 list of the most unforgettable Sundance stories. Ladies and gentlemen, what you hear will be true, only the names have been removed to protect the not so innocent. So starting with number 10, guest room damage. A musician stayed and left over 300 cigarette burns in the walls, furniture, floors, linen, curtains, light switches. You get the point. When asked about it, she apparently didn't want to smell like an ashtray. Number nine, firing your handler. A movie executive had three handlers, each carrying two to three cell phones. It was obviously a very important individual. The first handler couldn't stop crying and was out after 24 hours. The next handler made it through the weekend. The last handler made it almost seven days until a room service tray was throwing at her. <laughs> number eight, unpacking guest room clothes, among other things. There are a number of A-list celebrities who expect their items to be unpacked. In this case, we unpacked everything from individual underwear that was used just one time and then thrown away, as well as a suitcase of sex toys. The hardest part of that was determining where to place them in the room. Do they go on the nightstand? Do they go by the fireplace? <laughs> Ultimately, they place them next to the dishwasher. Number seven, special requests. One of the most unusual was filling a bathtub with five gallons of hydrogen peroxide and three pounds of Epsom salt. You can only imagine what that's for. <laughs> Number six, 
best gratuity ever. Very clean cut Mormon Bellman escorted an actress to her room. And after setting up the luggage, she said she didn't carry any cash, but instead flashed her breasts. To show the appreciation, the Bellman just said, thank you. Number five, <laughs> Naked Guess. One year, a famous and apparently well-endowed actor was locked out of his room without his clothes on, and he proceeded to walk through the snow to the front desk where he stood completely naked in front of three female staff members. The next day, he sent flowers apologizing for his attire or lack of attire. Number four, Grand Theft Auto. After a variety party, one of the golf carts was stolen by a well-known actor. The bellman just thought, well, he's well-known, we'll give him the keys. Well, the actor decided to drive the golf cart through a snowstorm down the street for the next two miles and abandoned it next to a bar in Park City. <laughs> Number three, corn paper. A, moon, a movie executive requested his entire deck blacked out with black plastic visqueen for video shots. This was a reoccurring theme each year whereby the staff labeled it porn paper. To the best of my knowledge, this is the only time the housekeeping staff has ever drawn straws to clean the room. Number two, special request, religion, or aliens. Our engineering department was tasked to cover over a dozen doors and windows in the guest room with aluminum foil. I have no idea. And the number one most unforgettable story during Sundance, fishing without a net. A movie executive was taken a, taking a deep soaking bath in one of our large jetted tubs and accidentally filled the water too high and couldn't figure out how to drain it. A staff member had to go to the room reach down between the guest's legs while still sitting in the tub and pull the drain club, of course. I hope you enjoyed the Sundance stories. Well, I hope, I hope nobody was uh, offended by any of those, but they were, those are the kinds of things that really do happen, unfortunately, during that time. I mean, you think about, this is a shot of the Egyptian theater, one of the most famous uh, theaters on on Main Street that hosts a lot of the showings. And this is kind of where it all, you know, besides the original Sundance, but once it hit and in, made it into Park City, this is the original the theater that, you know, everybody watched their film shown in. Um, this is Park uh, City Main Street. So we're at the bottom here looking up. Uh, if you can imagine our little town is about 10,000 people on a normal on a normal day, over Sundance, it swells to over 50,000. So these streets, there's no driving up and down the streets. It's blocked off. It's literally wall to wall with people wearing interesting outfits, you know, stargazing and anybody else you can, you know, venture in. So this is kind of an overall shot of Star, uh, Park City. So Sundance, right, is right over this ridge right here. So if you went up and down, Sundance is right there on the other side. So very, very close as the crow flies. Um, Sundance, people wear the weirdest furs. They break out their furs they never get to wear. So here, this is, anybody know who this is? I'm sure we'll get a chat. This is Justin Bieber. So I've actually seen this actual jacket on him on a particular, and right now in this, this photo, he's looking good. So, and then here's some others. This gal actually wasn't at Sundance. I just thought it was so outrageous. I just had to put it put it on the uh, picture. Um, here's some other, I don't know if we'd call them flattering winter styles of guests on the uh, on the walkways and the ramps and the and the step and repeats around town. So um, that's my Sundance portion, you know, just kind of the summary. So, Carol, which which story was yours? Uh, well, I, I I was tempted about the sex toys uh, by the dishwasher. That <laughs> wasn't me, though. I, I'm I'm not quite sure. They were all hilarious. I will say that. <laughs> so, 
So I wanted to get into the property a little bit. Uh, Howard, do we got a few minutes left? So we'll. It, um, there's a couple things about. I'm I'm 20. I don't know. Most most of my time has been selling sand and palm trees in Arizona and Southern California for most of my life. So I came up here about three years ago, and I'll I'll tell you I'll never go back. I'm I'm here for good. Um, Michaela and her crew, one of our favorite things to do, my wife and I, we live in Heber where she was talking about, which is kind of a triangle between Park City and Sundance and Heber and Midway. And we go down often in the summer on the Saturday and hike to Bridalville Falls and then come down and negate the hike with some food from their fantastic restaurant. So if you haven't been, you need to go. But uh, kind of where I wanted to start is how easy it is to get to the mountains. We are literally the most accessible mountain destination in the country. So um, compared to some of those other ski destinations or even mountain destinations, you fly into Salt Lake City and 35 minutes up a big six lane highway, you're here. So you're, you're at the edges of Park City. So it's something to keep in, keep in mind. Um, you know, when you think about um, different incentives and groups and you think, mountains and oh they're hard to get to we're not we're just as easy to get to anywhere um, that you would want to be across the united states um, this is kind of a little map um, um, that shows so you fly in here to salt lake salt lake and then you come this way right up this this highway right here and this drops you into park city we're here in the deer valley this is the Park City Resort here on the side. Um, Deer Valley Ski Resort, I talked about that a little bit. So um, tons of activities in the mountains. I used to travel with a guy who was from Park City and I was um, from Laguna at the time. And he always used to talk about how many more activities there are to do in the mountains than there are on the beach. And I used to just, we'd be sitting in the middle of a calls with a client and I'd be calling bull on his stories and things, but it is true. It is actually the truth. So we sit here, um, so Snow Park is the bottom. We sit right here next to the Silver Lake Lodge and then there's Empire Canyon here. So over 6,000 acres of skiable terrain. Park City Valley Resort was named the number one ski resort in the US for the ninth year running. Um, we were named the number one ski lodge uh, in the US for the seventh year running. So it's a great spot, um, winter or summer. Uh, no shortage of things to do, ease of access. This is kind of a shot on the kind of the backside of the hotel, uh, looking out towards the ski terrain. And we literally sit in the middle of these mountains, much like the Sundance Resort, we're in the middle of it. Um, so great village right below us that you can access. Um, this I took earlier today. So it is snowing right now. Um, so we, we desperately needed it. So guest rooms, we're, we're a little different. Um, each unit is individually owned. So for example, uh, if you walk into a little foyer, there's usually three keys. So it'll be, say it's room 100, it'll be 100-1, 2, and 3. 100-1 is the suite, and usually there's a king and a queen queen on either side of it. So those are all individually keyed or can be keyed together, whatever your needs are. Um, but what that does for us is we um, we are constantly renovating our rooms, updating our spaces, because it is part of an HOA requirement. So it's kind of nice. We don't have to wait on capital money, which we all know is in short supply this year for everybody. Um, during COVID, the only positive thing that we saw was we were able to accelerate that, excel, uh, that renovation project. So by the end of 2022, every single room will have a new bathroom, new kitchen, new hard and soft goods. So that is one benefit. So this right here is a shot of um, a what we call a grand suite. This particular one is called the Stein Suite, which was actually his first place here. It's a three bedroom suite and we have five of these. It's like having five presidentials. Um, and then we have standard guest rooms and then we have our standard suites or you know, they start about 1300 square feet. Grand suites are anywhere from two or 1800 to 2300. Um, these are standard guest rooms. You know, one thing about Stein, he was Norwegian. I don't think I mentioned that before. He came from Norway, thick accent, thick, um, um, 
kind of brogue when he spoke to you, but he was literally um, the epitome of, of European style alpine skiing. He was he was the face of it, and he built an alpine style mountain lodge. There's not a more authentic mountain lodge, I think, in the area um, when it comes to you know that European style lodge. And these are this couple of shots of the renovations that we've recently done. So all of our suites have full kitchens, full um, living spaces. Um, we redid all the bathrooms, um, updated the styles uh, to be a little more modern, but still have that mountain feel to them. So again, most of it's already done. A couple of years ago, we finished an $18 million expansion. So what we did is we added this theater, which uh, gets a lot of use during Sundance, of course, but at all times. We added the Champions Club um, pub, I call it a five-star pub. Um, so it's game room, uh, groups can rent this out uh, for private events. We added this second family pool here. So this is a Stein on the right, Goldner Hirsch on the left. And um, this is Flagstaff Mountain over here to the left is the Bald Mountain. Oh, and we just got these. Uh, they're five weeks old now. We got these four Alpine Globes. They seat about six, so you can rent those individually, do your meals and things. Um, this is uh, this is a shot um, of the Flying Aces. Uh, so they're an uh, aerialist team that will come and do events. You know, come do performances at your events. A lot of fun, and they can actually do um, this show in our ballroom because we have twenty-one or twenty-four foot ceilings at the top. So they can actually do this show either outdoors or and they're on skis and snowboards. And, you know, you can see I'm going to jump over to this other shot here. So this is this is our meeting space here. So 12,000 square feet of meeting space. Um, so this is the Stein Ballroom I was telling you about. 6,000 square feet, the Olympic, the original ballroom, 4,000. And then there's other spaces throughout. So there's kind of a little diagram of our main conference spaces there and some of the outdoor decks and things that we've added. Oop, spa, um, the only five-star spa in Utah. We're the only five-star and longest running resort and spa in the state of Utah. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a nutshell here. We're getting a little close on time, but I wanted to let you know. So this is kind of that Silver Lake Village run by Deer Valley sits right here. We, this is the Stein Erickson Lodge. Here's our sister property of the Chateau um, there. Um, so all very walkable. It's three minutes from the front door here to the front door here. And then this, you literally out our back door. During the summer, these lifts run all the time and you can access all these new uh, mountain bike flow trails, hiking, guided hikes, tours, um, everything literally right out the back door. And I'm going to jump ahead here. I'm going to jump back here and talk about activities a little bit. Um, winter, it's literally a world-class ski experience, true ski in, ski out, um, everything you'd want to do. One thing that's unique to our area here is the Olympic, the Utah Olympic Park, home of the 2002 Olympics. That park is open, it's 15 minutes from us. Um, you can ride this bobsled with your three of your best friends, winter or summer, better than any roller coaster you've ever been on. So if you're pregnant or have a heart condition, don't get on it. Um, and then literally right out our back door. So again, this is a, this is a um, meadow that's literally right at the top of the ridge from us. And then again, Sundance would be from this picture, like right over here, just down, the, down in that little canyon right there. And then all the activities you would expect, the summertime, um, what I tell people is boundless. There is so much to do. You could be a cowboy for a day. You can go rope cattle, horseback ride, mountain bike, golf, fly fishing. You know, it's, it's a special place. Um, regardless if you're on the Sundance side of the ridge or you're in the Park City side of the ridge, um, Park City is a real um, exciting place to be. I mentioned the, the um, Aerialists. So this is this is part of the Olympic Park, and there's a zip line here. Not nearly as cool as Sundance, as I have to say. I did that with my daughter uh, last summer. But um, 
ropes courses. It's a full half day of, of adventure for, for a group. These aerolists, these are Olympic hopeful athletes training for the next Olympics. They train here year round. So you can see, you know, the US ski team or the Canadian ski team, they're jumping into this pool off these ramps during the summer all day long. So it's a really, a really great experience in that regard. Um, quickly to wrap up for you, Chateau, 134 rooms. Um, it's our four star option. You saw it was just across the drive from the Stein. Um, great room product there um, as well. 400 square feet is the standard room. We actually host the largest ballroom in Park City here at 6,600 square feet. There's a little diagram there. And then last but not least um, is our Stein residences. Um, these are, so this, there are 14 homes in a little horseshoe around 40, uh, or excuse me, 54 condo style units. They're anywhere from standard guest rooms, which there's about a dozen up to um, five bedroom units. So, you know, for us, they're individually owned like the rest of our properties. So for us, this is a great little retreat spot for up to about 20 people. Um, the interiors of these things are amazing. They're, like I said, a home is five bedrooms at 5,000 square feet, true ski and ski out right out there, literally out their back door. Um, all the amenities that you would want uh, pool, indoor, outdoor, fitness center, ski shop, bike shop in the summer. This is the owner's lounge. We can turn into a boardroom for 20. Um, stunning views in this place. It has its own restaurant called 7880, which is coincidentally its elevation. Um, so that's kind of in a nutshell, the Stein collection. Lots of, uh, lots of options, opportunities between, between both uh, Michaela's property and ours. Questions? Wow, Jim, I wanna just say that was just such a creative and fun presentation. Thank you for the extra thought and tell your ops manager how much we all enjoyed the story. <laughs> lots, of, lots of comments about that in the chat box. So we appreciate it. And yeah, the whole property looks stunning. I'd like to talk to you too before I sign any agreements this summer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who has questions for Jim? Um, there are a couple here just in, in passing. One is uh, the Olympic Park is a great place to do something off-site. Jim, could you speak a little bit to that? You can uh, You can do really anything there. Um, you can make it an afternoon of activities. You can, there's a great museum there. You can do a docent tour through that. It has a lot of Olympic history in there. Um, Stein's a good, a big part of that. You can do catering events indoors and outs. Um, if you have a smaller group, I think it's up to about 30, you can do a dinner up in the staging area of the um, 18 meter, 1800 meter long jump. I mean, literally when you look down that thing, you get butterflies in your stomach because you're so high and that thing is so steep. Um, so there's lots of different things you can do there on that, on that property. And those little igloos that you have outside now, uh, how long will those be there? Are they a permanent fixture now? They are now permanent. Yeah. So they have, they have, um, they have, they seat up to six. They have heating, cooling, they have, um, Bluetooth, um, so you can put play your own music in there. Little fans, so it's they stay cool um, or warm depending on the season. So we rent those um, at two hundred dollars per meal period plus whatever your food and beverage is. Great, thank you. They're super cool looking, Jim. Yeah, no, they, they're neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the only uh, outdoor dining option at the moment? Do you have to be in an igloo to eat outside because of COVID restrictions? No, in, we're, we're actually very fortunate here in Utah in that we've been very consistent how the state and local counties have handled the, handled the we can be anywhere as long as we have six feet distance apart. So we can maximize our um, square footage based on, um, did you stop share with me? If I, if you didn't, I'll, I'll do that real quick. Yeah, you stop, you've not, okay. you're not. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as many as we can fit in a space, minding the restrictions that are in place. So basically that means 
uh, chairs have to be six feet apart. Tables have to be six feet apart. Um, so we can be indoors and out. We do have outdoor dining um, also under some heaters, under some cover. Um, and we have those igloos and the, um, the Alpen gloves, we call them. And um, yeah, so we're still operating. And just the 24 that fit into an igloo, you can feed more people than that. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Any, Any other? other questions? I think that's all that I see, of, you know, unanswered things. But everyone just simply loved the top 10 list. They, they, <laughs> that was hysterical. I was they, a little worried about it when he sent it over. I'm like, really, Dan? That's yeah, what no, you can't scare us, Jim. There we I are. didn't think so. I knew Carol well enough. To, I'm like, you know what? She's going to stamp this. I'm going <laughs> to live on the edge a little bit today. We live there. We live right on the edge. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Now I'm going to let Michaela and Jim and Inga put their heads together in the chat box uh, about our contest winners today. I want to remind everyone, the, the first five, if I don't have your address already, if you haven't sent it to me, please uh, do send it to me in an email. Uh, that information is on the chat. Or just one tag while I get on board with the thing. Okay, um, that would be Daniel. I, I may have your address, Daniel, but please send it to me anyway. Michelle, I don't think I have yours. Uh, Basha, probably have yours. Beth, I'm not sure. Beth Denny, please send me your address. And Carol, I know I have you one last week. So there you go, prompt. Hey, listen, we're, we've got a guest star today and it's one of our favorite hotel partners, uh, Mr. Bruce Leet from The Breakers. Um, the Breakers is celebrating their 125th anniversary as a resort. And we have a session on real-time retreats coming up in a few weeks with Bruce. But in uh, honor of the movie making uh, theme this week, we told Bruce he could come in and do a little promo as long as it looked like a coming attractions video. So hello, Bruce, take it away. The stage is yours. Hello, folks. hello welcome. Greetings from uh, sunny Palm Beach and the Breakers. It's good to be a part of this and um, it's just, uh, it's an honor. And I wanna say thank you so much to Carol and, and Whitney for putting this event together. Uh, and a shout out to, um, to Ma Ma Malika and um, Jim, Michaela, excuse me. Uh, what a great presentation. It was very creative and very informative. Um, you know, I, I wanted to announce that um, the Breakers will be uh, hosting the real-time um, destination this March 3rd. And as one of America's longest operating independent resorts, owned and operated by the same family for over four generations, we wanted to uh, celebrate with you uh, our 125th anniversary. So, uh, so please think birthday theme uh, for our event. And we put a little sneak preview, a little uh, taste, a teaser of what to look forward to. So please enjoy, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.
great. So I hope you enjoyed. Good film. Where's your outlaw outfit? Oh, I, it's in my closet. I'll break it out some other time. I was expecting a cowboy. I don't know why. <laughs> the, no, beard, the beard's good, though. The beard is good. It's good camouflage. Nicely done, Bruce. That was beautiful. I should have worn a patch you and got <laughs> There you I go. I was thinking the gambler. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Kenny. Kenny Rogers. There you go. Kenny Rogers. Woo. All right. Next time. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. I, I, I'm not sure what we're going to suggest in terms of preparing for the breakers. Um, we could say the golden age of travel. We could talk about Palm Beach style with Lily Pulitzer and fancy homes and mid-century modern. But I, or we could talk about a kid's birthday party, or we could come right. as 125 year old people. That I would do that. <laughs> so that too many of them anymore. Me. What? <laughs> There's not too many of them anymore. True. <laughs> would only require a little bit of makeup for me and some silver hair dye. Well, thank you so much, Bruce. Well, Stick around. We're about to do prizes. Um, thank you for being here with us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Looking right. forward to seeing you all. Thanks. And you too. So um, let's talk. Let's go back to Michaela and Jim and Inga, our three hosts, and they will be now telling you who is going to go home with their with their prizes. Um, uh, why don't you go first, Jim, and uh, tell the winner what it is they're getting? All right. So I, I liked uh, Kara's interpretation. So I'm going to go with Kara Carte, and uh, it's a two night stay with breakfast. Um, you always get a cocktail with me if you want, and uh, yeah, let us <laughs> let us you come out. You can get it. You can get in and out of Utah. So when you're ready, <laughs> we're open. That's great. Congratulations! Thank you Would so you much. So I'm excited. Excited. Take a picture of Annie Oakley there with a <laughs> with a Puritan collar. In fact, if everyone who's dressed up would take a picture, that would save me an hour of going through the video and capturing photos. That means you, Daniel and Kevin and Carol and Beth and Sam. So please send me pictures. All right, Michaela, what do you think? I'm going to go with Sam. I loved her outfit and all of the research that she did going into Butch Cassidy's gang and everything. So we're doing a two night stay and breakfast at Sundance as well. So, yay! Congratulations, girl. <laughs> preparation, you know, matters. So, Miss Inga, what have you got? Oh, well, I got to tell you, this is, this is difficult. You guys just pull it all out. I'm telling you, this is so much fun. But I, I have to go with Kevin Eastman. You cracked me up. And the fact that you got up and showed everything, stuck your foot up, whatever. So <laughs> you win a Maui Gym choice card, and I'll email you the code and pin, and you can pick whatever you want. Well, thank you very much. Maybe some ski goggles. I don't think they have. Or some, them. yeah. Or we can pick you a pair of ski goggles too. Zeal, our our, our okay. sister company. Yeah, you, they made my life do a little bit better than those. <laughs> Thank you very live, much. Live large, Kevin. Congratulations to all three of you, and congratulations to our first five. I don't think I mentioned that uh, those first five today are getting a gift from both resorts, from both Stein and Sundance. And I will send your addresses to Jim and Michaela so that they can send you some goodies. So thanks for being early this week. And next week, we're going to have some fun with Japanese culture. Um, we are celebrating Nobu, the new brand that Nobu Mitsuji, the chef, <laughs> the chef Nobu, and Robert De Niro have created together. So they've collaborated to take their successful restaurants into the hotel world. And we're going to be celebrating uh, beating the drum for Nobu, especially going to focus on the new Nobu resort in Cabo, Los Cabos, as well as in Miami. And there's also a new one in Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the concept behind the brand. Maybe we'll make some sushi, bring some sake, um, you know, wear a kimono. I don't know. We're going to have some fun with the Japanese culture next week. So y'all please come back. You in? Everybody in? Good day. Thank you all for being okay. here. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Michaela, so much. Thank you, Inga. As always, our partnership with Maui Jim is very valuable to us, and we hope to see you all next Wednesday. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.